This is my Remix Hopper and it's a dub and blend that I've created. It's worked really well, especially through the summer months when the, the sun's bright. Uh, it's just got a little bit, a couple of triggers in there that just seem to work. Um, quite an easy flight to tie, but one that works really well. So let's go ahead and tie it. I start off with a, a dry fly hook and a vise. This is a Kamazan B170 dry fly hook. And when I'm tying this fly, I like a, a red thread. So red, uni thread. Just coming in. There's not a lot of materials to this. Um, but it's all about proportions, getting the proportions right. So I'm coming down just to a point opposite the barb of the hook there. If you do want to use a barbed hook, I would use um, SLD2, part of SLD2, or maybe a Hanak uh, 230BL. That would be the two that I choose. So, next thing. This is a, a fish scale crystal flash. So it's like the same colour you'd see on the side of a fish. It's not white and it's not dark. It's quite hard to explain actually. But yeah, fish scale crystal flash. All I'm going to do is take a long piece, fold it over, fold it over again so I've got a quarter, and then fold it over again so I've got eight strands. So I've got eight strands there. And again, this is a trigger, especially in the summer months when there's sun. Uh, it really seems to work. So tie that in. Again, stopping at a point opposite the barb of the hook, and I just come in with my scissors, and I want to leave quarter an inch. That's about quarter an inch there. Make sure it's bedded in nice and tight. Now, next thing I do is some wax, because I've got a, a claret seals fur. I just want to see if I can show you this. I've got a claret seals fur, but I've got some synthetic Fritz fibers pulled off the core and mixed in. It's actually better if I show you it in my hand. So let's just grab a pinch there. You can see that, the, little, the, the fibers in there. So I'm going to form a, a tight, hence the wax, I'm going to form a tight dubbing rope. Or as the Americans say, noodle man. However, we're not in America. Red and blighty. Tying that in, keep it tight. So you might have to spin, come in and adhere the seals fur to the hook shank. I give myself a little bit of space at the head for tying with. So you can see that there. Looks absolutely tremendous. However, it looks even better when I start pulling stuff out. Like so. You can get a better idea then. So then I'm going to come in. I've got a little loose fibre there. With some knotted pheasant tail legs, these are claret obviously to go with the fly and I'm going to stick some in I, I prefer to tie, my, tie them in on the underside of the hook shank you can do it two ways, you can put it to the side here and tie it underneath with a pinching loop like so pull the fibres up make sure you're happy and then same again on my side of the hook shank so again Four or five. I'll just wait. Mar it up to the side of the hook shank. Pinch and loop. Tie it in. So you've got the legs there. So we now come in. I like a lot of legs on the hopper. A lot. And then tidy up. With a few thread wraps. 
And now the important part of any hopper, uh, this Remix hopper, as I'm gonna call this Remix hopper, it's just the, it's the dubbing material that I've got. It, it just works so, so well. So I've got a uh, genetic claret, really rich claret harkel. I've just got a selector fiber that suits the fly. That's perfect. I've got like one and a half times the gape of the hook. You can just pull that up. I'm going to cut out the scissors. So when I'm tying anything, I like to have a, the security, a little whip finish. And yeah, snip him off. Uh, what am I looking for? Hackle pliers. Try this fly on its own, um, or on the point of a team of three, smaller bobs bits further up. But I've tied this on a, I can't remember if I've tied this on a 10 or a 12. Um, bigger the wave, bigger the fly, obviously. When you're turning the hackle, make sure you get a turn and then stroke the fibres back. That way you're getting a complete coverage of the thread. It also means that you didn't trap any fibers, fibers under uh, an existing wrap. So pull the feathers back. Being careful not to spin the bobbin hackle pliers. Get quite a bit of hackle on that because it's a big, it's a big fly, big hook, and then just come up. Secure with one thread wrap. A couple more. Um, even, even though it's a genetic, it should just, if you pull it back the words against your thread. <laughs> Typical. It is a genetic, so the stem's a little bit stronger. Whatever I did there, I've splayed the legs. There you go, it's better. And then just stroke all your fibres away for the, the eye of the hook and tidy up. I've got one stray one there. That I can see. Try and uncut half your hack of Stevie. And then just come in. I like to go for the, the eye back to whip finish. Like so, and you can, if you wish, you can actually, you can cut a V underneath. I don't bother, I like a, I like a big, I like my hopper to, to sit high in the water. If I want to sit low in the water, I basically take that cock hackle off and use a hen hackle, so. And with a little bit of varnish, just to finish that head, take some of the brightness away from that red head. And that's him. That's my remix Claret Hopper featuring that um, pretty out there dubbing material. It works really, really well, especially when there's any sun uh, through the summer months. That's him. I really hope you enjoyed that, folks. If you did, please be kind enough to subscribe to my channel. Plenty more on there. Take care, folks, and bye-bye.